Greetings in the sweet and powerful name of Jesus. Gives me great joy once again to come in your home with your blessings. And as you, as our church know, Tuesday night is hour of power. So let's hear a word from God that will bless you, touch you, motivate you, inspire you. And I know it will. I trust you all well, getting ready, seated, with your Bibles, your notes, and let's be blessed this evening. Are we ready to go? Yes. Amen. Okay. I want to continue on the message I preached last Tuesday, Defenders of the Faith. And I thought that was really good. Many were blessed and you responded as we study the word of the Lord and read. So part two is Defenders of the Faith through the faithfulness of God. So part two is through the faithfulness of God. In other words, the question might arise, how do I become a defender of the faith? And I'm excited because in the meaning of the word, faithful or faithfulness cannot be spelled without faith. So if you and I stay faithful to God, I believe there will be an increase of faith to support your stand and my stand no matter what we go through in this life. You got that? Amen. And so that's what is going to empower us to come through. Stay with me. There's a few scriptures I want to share with you. And one of my favorites that I want to break down, elaborate, explain, dissect, however you want to call it. And let's get into the word of the Lord. Reading 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 to 16. I'm now reading from the King James, New King James Version, okay? Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, verse 13. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. Now that could take message upon message to explain the sufferings of our Lord. Amen? That when his glory is revealed, somebody say glory. When his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy if you are reproached for the name of Christ. Blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busy body. Yet, if someone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. And I'm sure you are excited. Here, yeah, verse 16. Let me repeat. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. Bible says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because it is the power of God unto salvation. So, church, we cannot keep quiet. We got to testify in love. We got to witness and let them know what we believe is so real and is so true and be encouraged if you are suffering for the sake of the gospel that's what the scripture says let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or an evildoer and etc yet if anyone suffers as a christian let him not be ashamed don't be ashamed maybe you at work at school Varsity, wherever it might be, and people might try to challenge you. I always say never debate. Share your testimony. Share what the Lord has done for you. It's good enough because that's your personal experience. It is your personal testimony. A testimony means sharing what the Lord has done for you. So don't be ashamed. Be bold. Be strong. Stand up. Because we know there is power 
in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I want to read that same scripture from another translation. Friends, when life gets really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God isn't on the job. Hallelujah. Sometimes we feel that way, right? I've heard people come to me over the years, Pastor, it seems like I can't hear God. I don't know if God is involved in what I'm doing. It seems so bad, so fearful, and so on. But listen to what the word says. Don't jump to conclusions that God isn't on the job. In other words, he's aware of what you and I are going through and he is watching over it to bring it to a good conclusion. Instead, be glad that you are in the very thick of what Christ experienced. I don't know how many of you can handle that, but like the old saying goes, it never rains, but it pours. So things happen to us and sometimes so many things happen at the same time and you just think that you don't have the strength, the energy to pursue this. Listen to God's word right now. What he's saying, are in the very thick of what Christ experienced. This is a spiritual refining process with glory just around the corner. Oh, I'm going to say that again a little later. With glory just around the corner. Write that down. You know, often I have these sayings and proverbs that come through my preaching. Here's another one. With glory just around the corner. It means that all the pain and hurt is going and glory is going to be manifest. If you abuse because of Christ, count yourself fortunate. It's the spirit of God and his glory in you that brought you to the notice of others. If they on you because you broke the law, etc., that's a different matter. But if it's because you are Christian, don't give it a second thought. Be proud of the distinguished stature reflected in the name of our Lord. Wow, that really speaks for itself, right? Let's be proud of our faith. Let's be proud that we can stand for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now there's another one in 1 Peter 1 verses 6 to 7 from the New King James. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials or tests, that the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Let's read it again from the message, another translation. I know how great this makes you feel, even though you have to put up with every kind of aggravation in the meantime. Pure gold put in the fire comes out of it proved pure. Genuine faith put through the suffering comes out proved genuine. When Jesus wraps this all up, it's your faith. Say faith. It's your faith, not your gold, that God will have on display as evidence of victory. Isn't that true? When you win whatever competition it might be in, what do you display? Your victory in the form of a cup or whatever it might be, you display it because it speaks of your victory. But let's just back up a little bit and let me put something deeper in your spirit. It says, pure gold put in the fire comes out of it proved pure. So when gold is put into the fire, to the into the furnace, some say seven times, I'm not sure, I stand to be corrected. And when it comes out, it proves that it's still genuine gold. Now the Bible likens that to your faith and my faith. Genuine faith put through the suffering comes out proved genuine. Wow. You know, I'm saying to our pastors that when this lockdown is over, when we are able to get back to church, there's going to be a whole lot of faithful people standing at a new level, seeing things at 
at another dimension in God because already this COVID that we're going through is not nice. It's one of the worst tests and trials that not only us, that the world is going through. We don't know what it's like. Nobody has ever experienced it. The deaths and lives that have been lost is so sad. And they say that so many lives and even more has never been lost when they go back to World War I and II. So this is a great loss. So we need to stand with pure faith. We're not here to offend, to fight, to argue, to debate with one another. The Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. I've always taught you that we don't fight one another. Our battle is not with each other. Our battle is with spiritual forces in heavenly places. So let us us come together as brothers and sisters in genuine faith and genuine love. Put through this suffering comes out proved genuine. See, you're going to come out of all of this. And whether it's personal problems, maybe even loved ones you could have lost at this time. You're going to come through proved that your faith is genuine and not fake. Because our faith has got to be tested. You look at us as pastors and you see how God's using us. But you've got no idea what we've been through over the years. The challenges we had to face. How we have to stand in the face of opposition. Don't quit. Don't give up. But stand faithful to uphold the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, my brothers and sisters, look at this with pure joy. Because God wraps it up. This translation says, Jesus wraps it up. It's your faith, not your gold, that God will have on display as evidence of your victory. What's the evidence? Your faith. Your faith was not moved. You did not say, I think I'm going to give up. I don't think I can handle this. Oh, I think I'm going to stop this or the other. No, you said I'm standing. I'm going to stay faithful in everything that I'm doing. I can't wait for church to start again because I'll never miss a service after this. Why? Your faith has risen to another level. Amen. And you're going to believe that nothing is impossible. So as you and I stay faithful, no matter what we're going through, the faithfulness of God will empower us as defenders of our faith. So you ask the word, how can I be a defender? You think of defending, maybe you're thinking of, an, of a soldier holding a sword, you're thinking of a gangster or somebody holding a gun. No, 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 it's not violence, nothing like that. It's in your faith that you defend through the trials and tests that you're going through. You're not going to quit or give up. You're going to stand faithful. Why faithful? Because your faithfulness to God will empower us to be defenders of our faith. Hallelujah. So let me help you understand this. There is a little bit of automatic transition that happens as you stand faithful. You know, I've said it many times in our church that the anointing does not only increase through fasting and praying, but it also increases when you pass the test. And I've experienced that over the years and I've shared it with you over and over. And I pray at this stage and this time in your life, you mean it and you get a hold of this revelation. I'm going to conclude, it's going to take a few minutes though, with this, one of my favorite, favorite scriptures in the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 13. Please write it down, take it down. We're going to talk about this and spend maybe the next 5 to 10 minutes on it. Verse 13 starts off by saying, No temptation or trial that has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. Or oh, somebody say, but God. God is faithful. Faithful. He will not let you be tested or tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out of it so that you can enjoy it. Hallelujah. Oh, bless God. Somebody say, glory and victory is just around the corner. 
Why? Because we're staying faithful no matter what we are going through. Let's go with the first part of the scripture. No temptation or trial that has overtaken you except what is common to man. My understanding of this is that whatever you and I are going through that you might think or seem or conclude that it is impossible. The Bible actually says it's common to God. What you and I are going through for the first time, it's common to God because God has experienced bringing so many people through over the years and generations. So he's like a specialist. I often say a specialist deals with one situation. For example, if it is a heart condition, you go to a cardiac specialist and he can just tell you by the symptoms without doing much testing that this is not a heart attack or it is. But he'll go and give you all the tests to give you peace of mind. But he knows the symptoms because that's what he specializes in day after day. So God is your specialist. He's my specialist. And what you are going through is our first time. What we are going through in this country, what you and I are going through as a church, with what's happened currently on media, it's our first time. But God says it's not his first time listening, looking, and having a way of escape. So he's got this. Somebody say, he's got it. The next point, and God is faithful. We know that. We know that. We know that. Pages and pages, it'll be a message on its own, talking about the faithfulness of God. Every great prophet in the Bible said, God has been faithful. I like what Joshua says. He says, no promise of God has failed me. And so he concludes in the last chapter, in the last few verses, he said, I've decided that as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Why? Because he had seen the faithfulness of God through his life, through the ministry, taking the leadership from Moses, going into the wilderness, through coming into the promised land. He's seen the promises of God. He's seen a God that has been faithful. When there was no water, there was a rock that was struck. Water came out. When there was no food, manna from above. Oh, hallelujah. When they were surrounded by the enemy behind them, walls on either side on their left and right, in front of them was the great Red Sea. But God separated, divided it, and brought the children of Israel through on dry land. Listen to the next. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can be. Oh, I love this. Come on, including myself. It's like, Lord, it's getting a bit heavy. Lord, it's becoming a little bit too much. I don't know how much more I can take of this. What is God saying? He will not allow you to go through what you're going through if it's beyond you, if it's too much for you. If you think you can handle it, listen to me. God says you can. Hallelujah. You can, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can enjoy it. Now, listen to this as I conclude. We know, for example, if you meet a serious accident or, you, or the loss of a loved one, that's what we do in our church. We counsel, we comfort, we help people plan their funerals and stuff like that. But when, while they're doing that, they're not thinking how I'm coming through. Let's be honest. You're not going to go on a fasting and praying and because that joy is like not there. You, you're just struggling to come to terms with what has happened to you. But that's why we as pastors will tell you it's going to be okay because this scripture says that he will also provide out a way that you would be able to enjoy. Another translation says you'll be able to stand the weight of what you're going through. So I'm here to help you realize that whatever it is we're going through, it seems difficult in our homes, in our lives, in the church, in our ministry, including us. God says we can handle it. Hallelujah. God says we can handle it. I can almost hear somebody say, that's good. That's good. Now, the last thing about this is that sometimes we wonder why is all this happening to me now? The scripture I just read to you, God says you can handle what you're going through now at this time. Why? The reason is because at this time you can handle it. 
We often think, you know, it should have happened maybe later, maybe next year. Why well, didn't happen before the coronavirus? The scripture is saying that what you're going through, if you're out of work, if you've lost a loved one, or whatever crisis, your marriage, whatever it is, God says you're going through it now because at this time, he knows that you're in a position to handle it, although you don't think so, although you don't believe so. But God knows all things, and he knows that you will come through. Why will you come through? Because I believe in seasons. This is a seasonal thing that's happening to all of us. And seasons change. Seasons end. Look up. Be strong. Be bold. For the Lord your God is with you. So it will not. Though it would look like a loss. It's not a loss. It's your season. Your pain. Your suffering. That's coming to a change. Somebody say next season. Yeah. We look after winter comes spring. And then summer. Because the next season is always better. We all don't enjoy winter. But the the next season is better. Somebody say next season, next season, next season. Whatever you're going through, you're coming through. Trust me. Stay firm. Stay true to the call. Stay true to your church. Stay true to your ministry. Stay true to God in fasting, in praying, and studying the word. I promise you, he is God all by himself. He doesn't need your help or mine. So his word is is forever from the beginning to the end is the alpha and omega the beginning and the end god never changes he never lies he's not man that he should lie so hold on if you're listening to me and maybe you're not a christian or maybe you're a backslider this ought to inspire you i trust that a family member will share this message with somebody that's going through tough times this word my friend my brother, my sister will bring you through like he's bringing all of us through. I'm getting ready to pray for you. I often say your pain will be your gain. Without pain, there is no gain. So it's not easy. Trust me, it's not easy. You know, I've shared my testimonies over the years and this few months of all that we've been through. It's painful. It's hurtful. Mentally, physically, but spiritually, we connected to God. So let's pray together. Let's trust him for your miracle. If you would just mention right in your home or wherever you are, in a hospital bed, wherever it is, I will stand in agreement with you, although I'm not sure what it is, but I'm praying for you right now in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the sweet and powerful name of Jesus. Oh God, we love you, Lord. I can just not go on and say that God's touching somebody's uh, stomach. There's complications. God's touching you right now, my friend. God's touching you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, heal in the name of Jesus. Heal every sickness, every disease. I curse it in the name of Jesus. I pray for your blessings, your peace, your love to reign over them in the mighty name of Jesus. We'll give you praise. And Lord, we can never forget to ask you to bless our workers on the front line. Doctors, nurses, so many loved ones that have been lost and the pain, the grieving, comfort them, Father. Let your peace, let the sweet power of the Holy Spirit be their comfort today in Jesus' mighty name. So, Lord, keep us strong. Keep us together as the church, the body of Christ, as we stay faithful according to your word. And we're careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Like I normally say, give God praise in the house. He deserves all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Wow. I trust you've been blessed. I hope and I know you would have enjoyed the word. And if you've been listening and you're not sure how to contact us, all our information will be on the screen. Contact our church. We have pastors and counselors to pray for you. I love you. Until the next time, don't forget, it's up to you.